Well, guys, apparently Google cooked. And yeah, this benchmark is looking crazy. This is for the new Gemini 3 Pro, comparing it with the Gemini 2.5 Pro along with Claude Sonnet 4.5 and also the GPT 5.1 that was just recently launched. This, this is incredible because they kind of waited for the GPT 5.1 to be launched. In fact, let me check this. GPT 5.1, not the codex. Let's search for yeah so six days ago gpt 5.1 was launched then today gemini came out with the best model yet and i just know that as usual this model after a week or two it might be kind of downgraded and not work exactly like it is right now and then there will be people watching this video a month two months from now and saying no that model isn't that good but and yeah we need a way to measure these models and it can't just be like oh i created this interface look at how pretty my interface is so the way to go is just going by the benchmarks and as for the swv bench verified which is the benchmark that targets agentic coding claude for sonnet is still on top it's still the best model at least for this benchmark but for all of the other benchmarks Gemini 3 Pro is just smashing everything. And some of them are just massive. Like, look at the ScreenSpot Pro. It's about screen understanding. And if you look at GPT 5.1, it has a 3.5%. Then Cloud Zone at 4.5 has 36%. And then suddenly, 72.7% for Gemini 3 Pro. This is really impressive. Now, I don't know if you've seen this before, but Next.js has an Evolves page. What they do here is test a bunch of different models into a bunch of different features from Next.js. So use router, server metadata, route handlers, client component, server component, all that. And then you basically get back a success rate, which evaluates how well a model deals with when working with Next.js. So I think this is a pretty good measure for full stack web development. And you might be seeing GPT-5 codecs at the absolute top and then Claude Sonnet 4.5 all the way down here with a 32% success rate. But then if you look at the agent performance, which is where like Claude shines, which is Claude code, you get a 42% success rate, which is the same as the GPT-5 codecs all the way up in the top. I actually have to take a look at the footage because Gemini 3.0 Pro Preview wasn't here when I started. I was even using the repository from GitHub to test the model. And yeah, I got that 42%, but I got a 44% on GT5 Codex. Though, yeah, this is pretty close and might not matter that much. And if you've noticed this average duration being like twice the size of any other model, that might be because it was launched today and everything. everybody's like testing it, making YouTube videos about it because it obviously gets a bit of a trend. So yeah, let's go over to my actual test here. I first tested Claude Sonnet 4.5 and I tested it with this prompt right here. So create a Next.js app inside of this folder. I like to specify like a dot because inside of the command, like you just place a dot for like in here or else it'll create its own folder and yeah, whatever. It should use Shadsian UI for the components. Please style it with a glass morphism design and a blue color palette. The website should have a simple centered input field where the user can enter a URL. After clicking scrape, it should call Firecrawl's scrape endpoint to scrape the provided website. Search for Firecrawl's documentation if needed. The response will be markdown text, which should be displayed below the input field with proper markdown styling. So this is pretty much it. And this will help me understand both how it's designing things and if the design is pretty generic, um, how it handles the result it gets with searching and using a third party library. So I already did this test with Claude code. And to be honest, I only had to iterate with sending over th this error right here. As soon as I sent that over, it thought through the process, fixed everything, and then it just worked fine. So here is the result I got. Not really happy about the design. I mean, yeah, we should prompt better. Ideally, you would prompt this better and all, but that's kind of what I'm going for. I want to really test how it generates things without me having to kind of guide it through, just kind of checking through like the taste of these specific models. So let's tell it to scrape AI rank dot dev, hit scrape. Okay, now scraping. Um, yeah. That was pretty fast. And 
the website has some glitches. Can you see that? Like it's kind of blinking while I'm scrolling. Y'all know if that's an issue from Next.js or if it's my Mac asking for help. But now let's move over to what Gemini created for us. So I sent the exact same prompt, but eventually it just stopped working. I guess it's just because there's a lot of people using the API today, but I just sent a continue message. It continued implementing everything. And as soon as it was done, I just had to place in my environment variables. As soon as I opened it up, I got this can't resolve tailwind CSS animate. So I just sent this error over to it. It managed to fix it should be pretty fine. It's just about like really installing the packages. Um, but what it created, at least for me, was a pretty like better UI. At least it's not so generic as it usually is. So AR rank dot dev, let's hit scraping. I feel like it's just faster, honestly. It maintained the page height, so that's pretty good. I honestly just don't know about it being dark. I think glass morphism isn't like it doesn't aim to be a dark theme. So let's prompt this with make the design look brighter, not with dark blue colors. So yeah, the worst prompt ever, but let's see what it creates for us. Okay, it's done. And I'm honestly pretty impressed. Like I have built this before. I don't think it's the best glass morphism possible, but it's much better than doing it in any other model. Like, like if I send the same prompt for the cloud version, let's check this. So same prompt, let's see what it comes up with. And by the way, I don't think this is the fairest comparison just because cloud code would run cloud sonnet 4.5 much better, but Let's see what it generated for us inside of cursor. So this is what we got. A lot of gradient. <laughs> the input field is kind of far from the description, which is far from the title. I mean, it's good, but again, there's that generic factor, you know, while this one is just neater. Yeah, this is so good with design that it got me thinking. If we use the branding endpoint from Firecrawl and send over convicts, because guys, look at Look, look, look at these colors. I don't know. I don't know what it is about convex, but this kind of pastel color, I don't even know what it's called, um, is kind of unique. And I like that. So let me extract that kind of branding from convex and let's build an entire dashboard based on the convex branding. So we already have everything here. Let me get that JSON, copy everything. And now let me open another tab with Gemini Pro. And now in this other tab with Gemini 3 Pro Preview, let's type in create a dashboard page that should just have a bunch of dummy data, but overall it should use this branding. The tough part about this is that I didn't specify what I wanted inside of this dashboard, but I mean, let's let it figure out on its own. Unable to reach the model provider. So you'll get that temporarily while it has just been recently launched. And I do think there's an app similar to Cursor that Gemini launched along with this model that is allowing free access to the model. It's this right here, Google Anti-Gravity. To check out more about this, I mean, in a few days, I might launch some videos uh, covering everything about it. But for now, check out Theo's video. Okay, it seems like it's done. Let's check the slash dashboard. And I'm excited for this. Okay, the colors are pretty good. It didn't overuse icons like AIs usually do when creating dashboards. Um, let's see. Let's have it like add more features to this and also go for glass morphism because usually when they try to implement glass morphism, it just sucks. My prompt is as simple as make it have a glass morphism design. Also make sure all the features work like the user drop down menu from the top right and etc. Okay, that might have been a second for you guys. Uh, the logo is gone for some reason. And this is kind of a glass morphism. Uh, we got a kind of a glitch here and there. But I mean, I like it. Of course, it needs some iteration to get better. But as I said in the beginning of the video, this isn't the ultimate test. We need a massive amount of people testing the model and reporting back. So if you're testing this, please let us know down in the comment section. What do you think? Is this a good model for coding? 
Is it working massively better inside of this Google anti-gravity IDE? Is it better inside of the Google CLI? Have you had a better experience using it inside of Cursor? Yeah, let us know down below. That is it for this video. I tried giving just a quick preview. If it helped you at all, please feel free to leave a like and subscribe for more. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Till then.